Welcome to the Fivefold video tutorial. This is one in a series of videos designed to provide a detailed review of Filefold software functionality. The focus of this presentation is the library administration functionality in Filefold. This presentation is aimed at users responsible for managing a document library on behalf of a department or company and managing the metadata classification system for documents stored in the library. The following topics will be covered in this demonstration. How to centrally manage the filing storage structure for documents in a library. How to set metadata collection standards so that other users can quickly classify and search for a document in the library. How to enforce naming standards for documents in the library. And finally, how usage logs track user interaction for each document. This video is not a complete review of all file hold software library admin functionality. I encourage you to view the other videos in the series if you're interested in other topics. First, we are going to look at the library hierarchy. Filehold has one library. The library is where all of your active documents are stored. The library structure is completely customizable and uses the cabinet, drawer, and folder structure that users are familiar with. There is also an optional level called a folder group, which can be used for additional structure definition. Research shows that filing documents either three or four levels deep, as shown here, provides the most efficient and organized means of browsing for files. However, due to FileHold's excellent search capability, having a structure designed for browsing is not entirely necessary. I'll show you what I mean by this later in the video. Now let's talk about library security. Access to specific areas of the library is controlled by group and user memberships at the cabinet and folder levels. Only users that are members of a cabinet can see the cabinet to access its contents. Once inside the cabinet, a user must be also a member of the folder it contains in order to access files contained within the folder. If the user is not a folder member, they will not see the folder within the cabinet structure. So, for example, here, user number one sees a number of cabinets when they log into the system. And then user number two sees different cabinets when they log into the system. What they see is controlled at the cabinet level. It is essential to take the security settings of the library into consideration when planning your library structure. For example, you would likely want to create a group for the accounting department and assign that group to the accounting cabinet so no other users can see or have access to confidential financial information. Same with the HR department. You would want to create a separate group for the HR department and give permissions to the human resources cabinet. Users and groups along with their assigned roles are set up by a system administrator and not the library administrator. Now we're going to talk about the schemas. So along with memberships at the cabinet and folder level, Permissions are also set at the schema or document type level. Documents are stored in the folders of the library, but in order for documents to be stored, they need a defined schema along with the required metadata field values. If users and groups do not have access to a schema, then those document types cannot be seen, added, viewed, or searched within the library structure. Let's look at some schema types and their membership inside of a system. For example, users in the accounting group can be restricted to only add, search, and access financial document types such as invoices, purchase orders, and bank statements. While users in the HR department can be restricted to only add, search for, and access only HR type documents such as expense reports, vacation requests, and performance reviews. Now let's talk about metadata. Document schemas manage how files are added to the library and what information is collected about them via the metadata. The ability to capture metadata about documents stored in the library is a critical part of any document management system. When adding a file to the system, the user will select the schema they want to associate with the document. The schema that is selected determines what metadata is required and what format the metadata will take. Metadata is used to classify documents and ensures the document can be searched for and quickly found at a later date. 
A good way to plan your metadata is to think about how a user would go about searching for a document. Consider an invoice document. The metadata that can be used to describe this document could be invoice number, invoice amount, invoice date, and vendor name. The metadata fields in the schema are typically the types of information a user would search for to find the correct invoice type document. There are several types of metadata fields that you can use to collect your information. Metadata fields can be of various types. Each type has a unique set of properties associated with it. The different types of metadata fields are as follows. You can have a text box, a drill down menu, a drop down menu that is either managed inside a file hold or does a database lookup, a date, a number, currency, a checkbox, or an external URL or URL that links to an external website or another document. Let's talk about the benefits of using drop down fields inside a file hold. So centrally managed vocabularies can be used if the metadata field uses a drill down or a drop down menu. Using pick lists or drop down lists keeps values consistent, avoids spelling mistakes, or alternative spellings of names. It also makes it easier for a user to fill out the values as less typing is needed. Drop down lists can be managed from within file hold or it can be populated from an external database. For a database drop down list, an example is a customer using an accounting system and need their users to associate an invoice number with a vendor. The list of vendors can be displayed as a drop down menu that is dynamically populated from the external accounting system. Now let's take a look at how a library administrator can set naming standards for different types of documents. As anyone in a high volume document environment knows, a descriptive properly named file allows users to learn much about the content of the document without having to open it. Renaming documents automatically is especially useful if you are scanning documents into the library and the scanner does not give your documents meaningful na file names. With FileHold, metadata can be further leveraged by setting up standardized naming conventions for a document schema. Any document added will follow the naming pattern that is set up on the schema level. Now we're going to go over to the live demo to see how library administrators can set and manage metadata field classification standards. We're going to be having a look at the invoice schema and its metadata fields, as well as its membership. We're also going to have a look at the custom naming pattern that is set up for all the invoice type documents. We're going to add a document to the library using those metadata fields that are in the schema, and then we're going to search for it. And we're also going to have a look at the document usage log. Okay, so here we are in the FileHold desktop application, and we're going to review the invoice schema. Now the invoice schema has already been set up inside the system. So we're going to go over to our document schemas, and we're going to locate the invoice schema. And here we are. So the general tab defines the schema name. You can also give it a description and define the format of the schema. Our invoices are electronic documents and we're not going to be using custom document numbering in this schema. Let's look at the membership tab to see who has permissions to the schema. So remember permissions on the schema allows those users who are members of the schema to add, view, search, and edit metadata for these types of documents. So we can see for the invoices schema that the accounting team has access to the invoices. We can see that there are two accounting teams. So one accounting team actually has a higher role than the other. So your accounting group are going to be the majority of your accounting team, which can simply add, view, search, and edit metadata for documents. And these guys have a role of document publisher. Whereas there's also an accounting senior team, and perhaps this is the manager or the CFO, who has a higher role, such as an organizer plus delete or a cabinet administrator. So they can do have more functionality than the regular accounting group. Now, taking a look at the metadata fields associated with the invoice schema, we can see that we here we have an invoice number, an invoice date, a vendor name, and the total. 
You can see here that I can I set that these fields, certain fields are made required. So that means they are forced to be filled out when an invoice document is sent into the library. This guarantees a minimum amount of information is captured as the documents are, are added. If these are allowed to be left blank, then when you go to search for a particular item and that information is not filled out, you may not get the search results that you are expecting or you may be missing information from the search view. I can also change the order in which these are sorted and this is the order in which people will fill out these fields inside of the system. I can also remove metadata fields from the schema if necessary by clicking on a red X. Now I'm going to skip over to the custom naming tab and this is where you set up the naming pattern for these documents. So we can see here that I've given my invoice type documents a prefix for I and B and that stands for invoice. So as soon as someone looks at the file name for this document, you immediately know that this is an invoice type document. Following the prefix, we have invoice number, and then we have vendor name, and then we have invoice date. And if I click refresh here, we can see that the pattern that's been created. My constants here are spaces. These can also be dashes or underscores. Now with my invoice date, I've also given it a field mask, and this is the format that I want my date displayed in the file name. There's other information that can be configured on the schema, such as workflow, auto filing, event schedules, and database lookup, but they are not going to be covered in this video. Now let's add some invoice documents to the file hold library. My system is set up so that my scanner outputs my scanned invoices directly into a watched folder on my desktop. And since file hold is watching the folder the invoices are being scanned into, they are automatically brought in to the file hold desktop applications inbox for processing. And here are my three invoices. So now I'm going to start tagging or classifying my documents by entering values into the metadata fields. All right. So here we have my document type. It automatically recognizes that this is an invoice. Uh, you can see here I have many other types of documents to choose from when adding documents. And now I'm going to start entering in my information, so my invoice number. My invoice date, this one was from April 22nd. My vendor is Bell and the amount is $24.67. Now I'm going to move on to the next invoice and fill out my information and this was from May 14th and this is from FedEx and my total is $123.23 I'm going to move on to my next invoice and this is from June 16th and my vendor is Pure Leader and my total is $45.47. And I've filled out all of my required metadata fields. Now I need to set a des destination for these documents. And because I have simple, simplified my library structure, I have all invoices from this year going into the same folder. So I'm simply going to select all of my documents in my inbox and drag and drop them to set the destination. So now that we have our metadata and our destination folder, our status now changes to ready to send. And now I'm going to click send all. And all of my invoices are being sent into my folder. I can see that all of my invoices are now here and are searchable inside of the system. So now I'm going to run a search for a particular invoice number. There's a couple of ways that I can do this. I can do a full text search where I just come in here into our full text search bar and enter in the invoice number. Click enter. And what happens is it goes out and it searches all of the information for that invoice number. So it's searching the metadata, it's searching the file name, and it's searching the contents of that document. However, I can 
do an advanced search on a particular invoice number. Uh, I'm going to click this little arrow button up here to bring up the advanced search screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look it up by a particular invoice number. So it's going to re retrieve me the exact search results that I'm looking for. So again, I'm going to enter in my invoice number. So it's only going to bring me back invoices with that exact invoice number. So it's a very particular search. And here it is once I've run my search. Now I'm going to do a different search. And I'm, again, I'm going to use the advanced search because um, this is the beauty of using your metadata. And again, I'm going to use my invoices. And I want to see all invoices that were added to the system between the various dates. So I want to see all invoices that were added between April 1st of this year and today. And I click search. Here are those three invoices that I just added. Once I have my search results, I can export this view out to a CSV file and open up an Excel and do whatever I need to do with that information. Now I want to show you the document usage log. The document usage log is available in the web client version of FileHold and it's also available here in the FileHold desktop application under the administration menu. The document usage log provides a permanent record of all the interactions that users can have with individual versions of a document. Library administrators can search and view the usage of files even after a file has been permanently deleted from the system. This functionality is critical when complying with the records management standards. So let me show you here that with the document usage log, you can quickly search through the entire library to reveal all interactions by clicking apply filter. And that's going to show you what everything's been doing in the system and all users and with all documents. You can also find out when the action was performed and what they've done the type of action. The, this record acts as a permanent record protecting the integrity of the file and providing a course of action in the event that a disgruntled employee, contractor, or otherwise has been negligent. So we can show you the filters here. So you can use uh, the document name, the type. So this is the schema type. Here are the actions that you can filter by. So there's quite a large list here. So adding a document um, here's permanently deleted, so you know if the document's been permanently deleted from the system, you could know who scheduled it for deletion, and quite possibly remove that deletion permission from that user if they have been negligent. We can also see if the action's been performed by a particular user, and when the action occurred. So I want to see all documents that were added by me and I want to see what happened today. So I should be come up with those three documents and here they are. Once again as because I have my search results I can export these grids to a CSV file and open it up in Excel and do whatever I need to do with the information. That concludes our video tour series on the library administration functionality. For more detailed information on the features of FileHold software, please contact sales at filehold.com or visit our website at www.filehold.com.